Welcome to the party, pal. Your friendly neighborhood. Master Chaos back with you. Once again, welcome to Master Chaos Theater. Tonight, we begin an epic journey. A 25-film epic journey, to be exact. We're going to watch, or I should say, I'm going to watch the Zatoichi film franchise. And hopefully, you'll join me. We'll watch them together. I saved you a seat, got some popcorn, got some JMB whiskey, got all the good stuff. The stuff we're going to need to get through 25 films. Now, of course, we're not going to watch them back to back. We're not animals. We will take our time. We'll do one a night. And, uh, well, we'll see where this takes us. I've enjoyed the franchise previously. This will be my second time through. And I'm excited to take you with me if you've never experienced Zatoichi the Blind Swordsman. Specifically, tonight's film is The Tale of Zatoichi, also known as Zatoichi Morogatari, from 1962, starring the amazing Shintaro Katsu as Zatoichi himself. We're going to be watching this film in Japanese with English subtitles, so if you have an aversion to reading, I'm sorry, that can't be helped. The Tale of Zatoichi, the first entry here, introduces us to Zatoichi, or Ichi. He is a traveling masseuse who wanders the Japanese countryside, basically, you know, giving out massages, that's how he makes his living. And the only thing he carries with him is a cane, which happens to hide a sword with which he is masterfully trained at. Now I should clarify, this is technically not a samurai movie, this is a Yakuza movie. As a matter of fact, Zatoichi makes it abundantly clear throughout the movie that he is a Yakuza member. And the people we encounter in the plot are also Yakuza members. Satoichi is called to the house of a local Yakuza gang member, and that's where he's residing when a turf war breaks out with another rival gang. Now, of course, this other rival gang has sort of conscripted another badass samurai to join their side. And it's only a matter of time before Satoichi and this other rival samurai known as Hirata will, of course, eventually clash. But, funny enough, this movie really takes its time to develop a friendship between these two characters. The first time they actually meet, they are fishing together, and it's a very nice, quiet moment. And what I really appreciate about these films, or samurai films, or the, the, the early Yakuza films, are the moments of poetry that you find. These aren't just big, crazy action movies. There's a leisurely tone, a measured poetry to it, and it really allows you to embrace the quiet. And when the action happens, you know, then all that quiet was, you know, the quiet before the storm. And it almost makes the action even more palpable and exciting because you care about these people. They're not just body parts. There's a wonderful scene in the movie where the people are sort of making fun of Zatoichi. And he shows up to prove them wrong. I'm going to share this scene with you right now. おめぐらはあなたって言い方されると文句があるんだよ。文句と飲んでいる。ひろきの手のひろいてんで。てめえのこと言うの嫌ですけどね。私は雑踏っていう名前通り、3年前までは笛吹いて街を流してたあんまで
お前さんも立派な目開きだけどねこんなことできるかい Now, I mentioned that this isn't a really fight heavy movie. It's fairly slow. Zatoichi doesn't even have his first battle in the entire series, much less the, the, his first picture,、uh, until the 50 minute mark. It's a very quick scene, but it really demonstrates how Zatoichi moves. <laughs> After Satoshi masterfully dispatches those two goons, war breaks out because the tensions have risen to a boiling point. Now, Hirata, the rival samurai, or I should say Yakuza member, has now told his boss that he is suffering from consumption, or what we today, I believe, call leukemia. Anyway, he's coughing up blood, he's not doing too well, and he's going to sit the fight out. But when he hears that his boss may use a gun, or in this case a rifle, to take Zatoichi out, he cannot stand it. He considers it a dishonor to see a fighter like Zatoichi go down by a bullet. So he jumps into the fight to essentially stand up for his side, but really he's just marking the bodies until he can get to Zatoichi. Hirata's exhausted and nearly dead when he finally runs into Satoichi, and we get our big, epic final battle between these two titans of the sword, Hirata and our buddy Satoichi. Satoichi. なんてことするんです。余計なことを言うな。バカな話じゃありませんか。いらぬ世話だ。来い。死に土産に、平手美紀と、打倒一の真剣勝負がしたい。
the last 25 minutes of this movie really makes up for the sort of slow, measured beginning, which I personally love, but a lot of people usually have trouble sitting through a subtitled movie that decides to take its time. However, the Zatoichi character is firmly established in this film. I'm not going to say anything more because I don't want to spoil anything, and I hope that this video has piqued your interest into looking the film up and possibly either watching it alongside me. If you have the Criterion set, I recommend busting that out. If you don't, I'm sure you could probably find these films some way to watch them. They're a worthwhile ride, and I look forward to watching all 25 films with you. I wanted to give this film a rating. It's difficult because I've only seen the first of 25 films, and to be honest, they all kind of run together after a while. Uh, for now, Let's say, out of five, I'm going to give The Tale of Zatoichi a four-star review. That may change. It may go up, it may go down, depending on, you know, the entire storyline in the 25 films. If something changes, or if this one is really stellar in some way and, and stands out in my memory. But for now, as a film by itself, I'm going to give it four out of five Samurai Swords. How about that? We'll go with Samurai Swords. My friend, thank you for watching. I hope this video finds you happy, healthy, and well. I appreciate your time. Thanks for coming to the movies with me. I'll see you next time when we delve into Zatoichi Part 2. I hope you'll join me for that one. And until then, the theater is closed.